Hello to everyone who's joined us in Zoom. If you just give me a second, I'm going to set up a live stream on Facebook and then we will get going. Hello everyone. <laughs> As you can see, I'm joined by Marie Reynolds, who is a fantastic therapist and will be telling us all about treating skin holistically in a minute. So I'm just going to check that we're live. <clears throat> yes, we are. Fabulous. Okay, so thanks for joining everybody. Um, I'm Eve Oxbury, I'm Head of Editorial here at Professional Beauty. Um, and as I say, today's webinar is Treating the Skin Holistically. Um, and I'm going to be having a chat to Marie Reynolds, who you can see with me. Marie is a fabulous facialist who specialises in, in treating skin holistically and has a real well-being approach to skincare. Um, so hi Marie, thank you for joining. Hello Eve, it's, it's a pleasure. I'm really excited to, um, you know, hopefully share some little pearls of wisdom uh, with uh, fellow therapists, especially at this time, just to, you know, help you think outside the box and just to see how treating the skin holistically can still get fantastic results. You don't have to have, treat the skin with just uh, mechanical implements and other things like that to get fantastic results. Fabulous. Um, so for anyone watching, if you have any questions as we go along for Marie, if you're watching in Zoom, there's a little Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Um, so type your questions there and we'll get as many as possible answered as we go. Um, if you're watching on Facebook, just type them in the comments. And yes, we will get to them very soon. So um, I guess to start off then, Marie, um, we've got to talk a little bit about how things are going. I think uh, following Friday's announcement, it's been a bit of a roller coaster for most people in the, in the beauty industry, particularly people that specialise in facial treatments, obviously. Um, what has the impact been for you? How has, has the way that you work changed or have your plans changed following the, the news that facial treatments can't resume now till at the very earliest 15th of August? Well, the thing is for me is that I've treated the skin in a very different way um, anyway. I mean, I, I, even though I've been trained in many, many different modalities, I've always come back to my holistic roots. Um, I'm not just a skin therapist. I have my background is in uh, homeopathy, biochemic medicine, fascia, health. Um, so it's all about pulling all of these different modalities in and understanding why the the effects that we have on our skin and how the effects that we have on our skin um, impact us from imbalances within. So when I do consultations, I have always done free consultations, uh, regardless of, of the impact of COVID. The difference is, is obviously I can't physically do hands-on treatment. However, that hasn't stopped me advising clients um, and giving them uh, an avenue in how to treat the skin holistically from within. Uh, my supplement range, so if you see with my range, I haven't got lots of different cleansers, toners, moisturizers, because I particularly, and it is a little bit of a maverick um, stance, I particularly don't believe in skin types or skin conditions because your skin is a reflection of what goes on within. Um, it is the largest organ of the body and it is one of the eliminating organs of the body. So we have to focus on what goes on within. So with my concept, it's about treating the microbiome, supporting the lipid barrier and feeding the skin from within with the supplements that I have. So yeah, I've done a hell of a lot of consultations um, and I think consultations for therapists as well is, is really key. Um, and I think we're, we're getting to that with, with questions I can, I can help um, therapists in, in looking at other avenues, but consultations have been through the roof. Obviously, the clinic here, um, I do a lot of the energy medicine and I do, uh, we'll be doing the clonic uh, hydrotherapy soon, uh, but facial treatments are no go. So, energy medicine, I've been doing a lot more of. Um, consultations have gone through the roof, I'm booked up until the end of the year. Um, yes, yeah, so I've been very, very busy. Fantastic. Well, that's amazing that you're able to, to work and to continue to make an income. It's fantastic that you can do that remotely. That's, that's fantastic. And we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later, as you said, about kind of ideas to help, um, to help therapists to maybe broaden their um, possibilities and, and start to do a bit more of that too. Um, I just want to talk a little bit first because we're, we're focusing more on treating the skin holistically. So I don't know if you can maybe explain a little bit about, um, about how you do that because you're known for quite a wellness approach to skincare. Um, yeah. 
So how does that work in terms of an initial client consultation? What do you ask? What do you look for when you're meeting a new client? Okay, so if we're, if we're looking on a therapist stance, when we're taught to ask consulta- uh, questions for consultation, we're taught to ask for the main cons- uh, questions for contraindications, okay, to make sure that it is um, a safe treatment for our clients to have. But for me, a consultation is, and also where a lot of therapists give their clients a consultation to fill in, okay, say, hello, Mrs. Smith, can you fill this in while they're getting their treatment room ready? It's, it's a missed opportunity. Your consultation, when it's filled out, your client will only tell you what she wants you to know. And it's really important that when you're filling out a consultation, that yeah, you're answer, asking the, the proper questions about you know, medication, family history, illnesses, etc., etc. But it's really important to understand about the food that they eat, how they go to the toilet, because it all has an impact on the skin. You know, all of these different things, you know, like candida overgrowth will reflect in the skin. Well, how does a therapist know if a client's got candida overgrowth? Most of us aren't taught that in in college or, you know, so it's understanding these little nuances and thinking outside the box. So when I do a consultation, I mean, obviously, as I said, I've got other modalities that I touch on. So I read implicit tissue memory. Um, Therapists that have done reflexology, you can touch on things like that it's really important to not pigeonhole your modalities. So if you've done reflexology, understand that the points of the feet, ask your clients to, to, to show you their feet and see if you've got different nuances and bring that into your consultation. So when I do a consultation, I'm looking at how a person is talking. If they're talking really, really, really fast, if they're breathing from their upper chest, that can give you an indication of a shallow breather. If they're twiddling with their hands, you know, or their, their, their hair, that can link in with anxiety and stress, and then that can link in with certain aspects of sensitivity. So for me, it's like joining the dots. And when the consultation is finished, I sometimes ask to look at their feet, because I look at the length of their toes. I look at how their toes are twisted in. I look at how their big toes pinched in, because you can tell whether someone's been yanked into the world by either born by C-section or forceps. You can look at the shapes of the ears to tell different things. Um, and this was, was a consultation technique that I used to teach uh, therapists. So, you know, there's lots of different things that I do and I pull in and people think, I mean, they call me the skin, uh, the witch of the West End in London, but if there's no um, spookiness about it. It's just understanding. I always say the body is like a human novel. You've just got to understand how to read the chapters. Mm-hmm. So the therapist, it's really important to just get your mind out of this linear thinking don't think okay this is a consultation don't think how can i do a consultation on a client where is it going to then take me what am i going to do with that you have to understand about the questions that you need to ask Mm -hmm. even about electrosmog when they're sleeping do they sleep with electrical devices in their bedroom if they do what does that do to the to the skin it's not just we're not talking about you know the blue light we're talking about things that can interfere with rest and repair so there are all little things, added extras that can give you clues in how to deal with your clients. That's really interesting and sort of just reading body language as much as anything. That's, that's really yeah, it's, it's understanding and also treating your client as an individual, not just sort of like regurgitating the same thing day in, day out, you know, and, yeah. and my clients, they'll do a consultation and then eight weeks later I'll do another consultation and then usually eight weeks after that we'll do another check-in. Um, and so it's, it's, it's really important to establish a relationship with your clients and take their hand and, and walk them through that journey, that healthcare journey. Yeah. Um, because as I say, your skin is not just a simple thing, it's, it's linked with everything else. Absolutely, and any kind of issues that are showing on the skin, there's often, well as a lot of us know, there's often an underlying cause. But I suppose, how, how easy then is that to, you said that obviously you, you have trained people in this kind of method, and how easy is it for people, for therapists to start to adopt these sorts of method? Can everyone do it? Can everyone tune in to these sorts of energies? Or does it take a certain type of therapist to be able to? See, everybody has the ability to tune in and to be intuitive. Um, 
usually if people feel that they can't do it or if you're looking and you're you're trying too hard you need to step back there are certain markers and i think as therapists first of all you've got to stop beating yourself up and comparing yourself to other people you have to also understand that and and appreciate that your knowledge is more than what your client may have okay and be confident in that mm -hmm. you have to also understand that it's okay to just do tiny little things every day and build on, on your experiences. So even if you pick out, learn how to do um, added little things into your consultation, like find out extra information and bring that in, like the electro smog. Like, for instance, you know, you know um, with teeth, you know, if you get breakouts along the jaw or around here, that can link in with teeth. Recent dental x-rays, or how your body is like purging, getting rid of your lymphatic system. So little added little things, add them into your consultation, ask the questions. You don't have to do, I mean, I've, I've got over 35 years of experience. I've taken pictures of hundreds, I would even say thousands of people's uh, feet and ears in the world. So, um, you know, and I've created this form of consultation through my experiences. Um, you know, and have confidence in yourself to, to branch out and bring these other things into your consultation. Absolutely. That's really interesting. And um, so I suppose when the consultation process is done and you're starting to move on to the, the treatment for the, for the clients that you meet in person, what are the main practices and methods that you incorporate into a treatment programme? Um, I suppose also, because yeah, obviously, as you've said, you do a lot of remote treatments, you do a lot of treatments where you will meet face to face. What are they, there's lots of different practices you use, aren't there? Yeah, again, it's, it's, it's very hard for people to understand what I do because if you don't touch it, see it or feel it, you can't understand it. And many of us are born in this materialism form like or a mechanical form that if you break your arm, you have to have a plaster cast, you can see and you can feel it getting better. But we have to think about more of um, an energetic form, okay? So... Basically, all energy converts into matter. So what I do with my consultations, I uh, link that with energy medicine. So I do testing to see what uh, energetic frequencies may be causing an imbalance. And then I look at inverting those frequencies. So when you invert a frequency, it's a little bit like the opera singer in the glass. When you match the frequencies, they shatter. So, you know, that is the energy medicine side, and then it's all about boosting the vitality. I can also imprint, and this is where it's, it gets really clever, with frequencies, I will ask my clients to send a tiny spot of their blood in. So they tend to send a tiny spot of the blood in, and I'll test the frequencies uh, against their blood spot. And if they want frequencies like for certain collagen uh, paths, certain um, orthomoleculars, which are all your vitamins and your, your, your nutrients and your minerals, all of those frequencies can then be imprinted into the skincare with their DNA. So it sort of like takes it on another level. So, and that can be done distant, uh, distantly. Um, as far as the skincare goes, obviously all of the things that I've taken into consideration in the, in the consultation, I would back up with the supplement care. And then I... I mix and match with my own skincare. So I do a little bit of alchemy with my own skincare because the Restore, which was the, the biggest thing that you know kicked off the skincare brand, um, I mix it with all the different supplements. I mix, mix the cleansers with the different supplements um, and get fantastic results from that. Fantastic. So again, as you say, kind of, it's gonna vary loads depending on who the client is and what their issue is, the sorts of uh, practices and methods that you start to employ. And yeah. then, but I, I mean, what are you seeing, I suppose, from clients? Um, and perhaps more so before lockdown when you were seeing more clients face to face, what are the kind of biggest skin issues that, that people are coming to you with? And has that changed, I suppose, because if it's rely, uh, dependent on lifestyle factors, are you seeing more issues related to stress or, or to lack of sleep or to these sorts of issues? The main issues would be, I mean, a, a lot with the frontline workers is, is to do with PPE, 
you know, what they call mask me, you know. Um, yeah. and, and the Restore mask has been fantastic for that because the Restore mask is a hemp-based protein and, um, and it also has an eight-strain live probiotic. So, you know, when we're dealing with the PPE, obviously we're dealing with sort of like additional bacterias and, and molds and that helps to balance that. So the Restore mask has been fantastic for the frontline workers. As far as skin conditions, you know, I suppose it's, it's I mean, rosacea is the biggest one rosacea and um, hormonal acne, which absolutely drives me mad, that termination, because uh, your hormones are dependent on so many different factors. And, you know, I could go right into one on that one. But hormonal acne and rosacea um, are the key things, because obviously these are dependent on stress. Mm -hmm. and also your diet, because we're eating more, you might be eating the wrong foods, you might be, you know, so all of these factors, you know, play a part in the skin. Absolutely. So are there, what are the sort of steps that you might advise a client then who is coming to you with um, acne or rosacea that has been caused by these sorts of lifestyle factors? What, what changes would you start to have recommend to help the skin? Well, see, as I said before, I ask questions like, um, what time is your last evening meal? Do you have fluids while you're eating? Um, how often do you go to the poo and what is your poo like? Is it a nice smooth log or is it impacted or, or is it loose? Because all of these factors, and, and this is another thing, as a therapist, you have to be confident in what you're saying. A lot of, our, a lot of therapists get embarrassed and they think, well, oh, should I ask that? Am I crossing the line? But at the end of the day, this is to get a result. You have to, you have to find out the answers. So for instance, if you're eating after say 7.30 at night, your digestive enzymes slow down. Now, if your digestive enzymes slow down and you're eating, say, about eight or nine o'clock at night, that food is staying in your stomach. Mm. And it increases the acidity and it also um, ferments. So especially if you're eating fruit, fruit really ferments and foods digest at different times. If you're drinking water, that is going to dilute those digestive enzymes. So the food isn't going to be processed and it's going to create a stress on the digestive system. All of these things throw out in the skin and rosacea is one of the biggest things that you have to do with your gut. But people think that your gut is just your large intestine and your small intestine. It's not. It's from how you chew to how you poo and everything in between. And it's all to do with the elimination organs. It's one thing dealing with a healthcare program, but you have to also deal with the elimination pathways. Because I always say it's like, it's like having a, a house party with unwanted guests. You can ask the unwanted guests to move, but unless, unless you grab them by the scruff of the neck and kick them up the backside out of the house, they're gonna be loitering in the hall and waiting to go into another room. Right. So you have to deal with the elimination pathways as well. And these are all little tricks that people miss. And that is why, you know, I don't ever bang on about what um, results I have. I always let my clients do the talking. And so, you know, the testimonials of people just changing certain things. Another thing as well, which is really important, which most therapists should know about, and it's a really good little tip to add into your consultation, is your sanitary care. What sanitary care are you using? Are you using regular sanitary care or are you using organic sanitary care? Because regular sanitary care is laden with formaldehydes, dioxins, um, uh, tiny plastic fil filaments that the vagina absorbs and then goes into the whole system and it circulates and overloads the liver. And it can come, a classic example of that is periodontitis. Okay. You know, so if you, if you start looking at taking down tiny little implements, eating a, before seven, making sure you're not drinking tap water, drink spring water, making sure that you drink minimum of two liters a day because you know it helps with your, your kidneys and your skin is known as the third kidney. Cutting out on um, fizzy drinks, definitely. Uh, making sure that you change your sanitary care to organic. Uh, getting your electro smogs, getting your electro, uh, electronic devices out of the bedroom. All of these little things you can add into your consultations and your clients love it. They think, actually, I didn't even think about that. Mm. But they're all things that don't cost your client anything either. And also, like you say, they're things that can apply to everybody. So you don't necessarily have to work that into a personalised consultation. That's just life advice. That's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the worry for some therapists is that, um, you know, they would say, well, my role is, is, is beauty. That's what I've trained in. I'm a therapist. I don't feel confident advising on nutrition or, yeah. or 
gut health, all that sort of thing. Um, so that's great. I think that, that that makes a lot of sense to say, well, these are things that apply to everybody and can help everybody, and you don't necessarily have to be that that expert in order to. No, no, no. And this is what I'm saying is, is that is the difference between your lifestyle advice mm. and being a, a nutrition or a naturopath. You don't have to be a naturopath and, and advise them on X, Y, Z vitamins. But if you understand that you're you get out of this pigeonhole thing that today I'm going to do nails, tomorrow I'm going to do a back massage, today I'm going to do a facial. You have to understand about the holistic point of view. The holistic point of view is your mental, emotional, and physical well-being, And that is influenced by your diet and your lifestyle, but also your thought processes, your stress. Because what you think and how you feel create chemical messengers that link to physical imbalances. So you know yourself that, I mean, like I would say with yourself, you're like a swan and water paddling like hell underneath. That you're a stomach type person. So any anxiety would go straight to your stomach and you may overthink, you may go, go to bed at night, be absolutely shattered, but... Oh, yeah. <laughs> a shallow breather. Okay, so it's like a shallow breather. And all of these things, and that's just by me looking at you for a few minutes. So you can imagine that when you're looking at a client, when you're doing a consultation, I would be looking at them and listening at them, but I'm scanning at what they're doing with their hands. Even yeah. if they're off screen, I can see they might be fiddling. I can look at their ears. I can look at the shape of their, their lips. I can look at all different things and have that, even, even that, what you just did there. It's really, really common. You know, with you know, if if you're you'll do this and it's like an anxiety thing, it's just part and parcel, and it's it's that swan on water padding like like hell underneath, and the stomach and the adrenals are brother and sister organs. So it all fits in, and this just tells you that you're reading your client, you're understanding more than what says on the consultation card. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's it. I think um as we've touched on, kind of, there are some things that apply to everybody, but then you start to go into a personal consultation and it is very much more personal and that's where I suppose the value is. Yeah. But how, what can therapists do then to maybe, if they want to start working a bit more holistically, you know, they see the value of this, they want to do it, but yeah. they're not necessarily confident. What are perhaps some simple things that they can learn or, or start to do? I think, I think the most important thing is to educate yourself and to read as much as you can, follow as much, you know, follow naturopaths, follow, you know, the, the, the good thing about social media now is that you have low hanging fruit. You can literally walk along and pick all of the different things, follow those people and learn from them. Not so that you can, you know, like obviously I'm not saying if you're following a naturopath, then start um, prescribing vitamins. What I'm saying is, Learn from them so that you can imp implement these little tips into your consultation. You have to understand what your unique selling point is, mm -hmm. your USP. And don't think that just because we're dealing with a consultation, a consultation doesn't end with your name and address and, you know, any contraindications. It's a chance for you to build trust, get to know your client, understand what your client is doing how she's sitting, how she's talking, to, even clients that, you know, you get clients that don't give you eye contact, that will look down, you know, and you get some clients that say, I don't like to be touched, I only like mechanical treatments. Yeah. That is a classic indication of certain, you know, emotional traumas or boundaries that they don't want to do or certain anxieties. These are people that don't want to open up and let you in. Um, and so there's other ways and other methods that you can do it. But I think, to start off with, just just read articles. I've got a blog. I've got absolutely a shed load of information on my blog. So, you know, you're welcome to go on there and have a look. Um, you know, show there are so many therapists online as well that are doing sort of um, demonstrations on how to do a facial massage. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many different, you know, you can do, a, you know, there's enough there's therapists that are doing, I mean, Nicola Josh, Joss was doing sort of like demonstrations on how to do a facial massage. Clients love that. You can do, you know, um, you know, you can even charge sort of like five pounds for each client to do sort of like a, a go through a cleansing regime or, you know, through the whole facial regime if you wanted to. Clients love that. Um, so there are different methods that you can do and different methods and different things that you can implement. But just, just, I think don't feel overwhelmed with everything because that's what, I think a lot of therapists think they'll listen to me and think, Oh, how does she do that? How can I do it? 
what can I do? And even when I, I used to train this method, I used to say to people, look, you've got the tools now, but just when you're looking at people, be aware of how they are. Be aware of them as a human being and as a single individual person and tap into that. Mm. And do you think, because I suppose that is something that is lacking. I think that there are some salons and spas that are fantastic at doing that, but in a lot that doesn't really happen. Um, and why do you think that is? Do you think it's a, a, a time pressure thing? Do you think that um, therapists just aren't really trained to, to tap into this side of the industry or I, mean, I, I think a lot of it is um personally i think it, it, when you're learning you have to learn in modules because it, it makes more sense but i do believe that you have to you know um i mean some people some therapists have got that natural gift you can you can tell by their touch you know and some therapists go through the motion it's almost like learning a learning a waltz you'll see some pick some dancers that glide through and there's other dancers that are counting the steps one, two, three, four, one. you know so it's a little bit like that and i think it comes with it definitely comes with experience and confidence um because you can be the most educated therapist the most confident ther therapist but not have that intuitive touch and that is what brings your clients back time and time again you know so I think as far as learning it, it's really important. And I do think it's missing. I think it's missing fundamentally consultation um, and bringing in all of these lifestyle nuances that are so impactful on skin health. That's missing definitely in the curriculum. Um, mm -hmm. and, I, I, and, and, it's, and it's invaluable for therapists to know and learn. Yeah. Definitely. So perhaps that's something I think it's, it's difficult at the moment, isn't it? And I know that college courses are being shortened and your kind of face to face time and in training is shorter than it than it used to be. So it's, it's hard to get everything in. But I think that, that you're right. I think it comes um, with training. And I think that that confidence with your client is something that um, a lot of salon owners say is often lacking in new therapists. So it's definitely something that takes quite a lot of time to build. Yeah. And I think as well with confidence, the problem is, is that you know, our clients have accessibility to everything that we have. You know, um, you know, everything is online. They can read all of the things online. And sometimes, you know, when clients ask us questions and you think, oh gosh, I don't know that. What do they mean? You know, you just think, well, that's interesting. I'll get back to you and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll find, don't worry. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to be an expert. You just have to be confident in your ability to do a fantastic treatment and be, do have the, the knowledge that you have got and be confident in the knowledge that you have got. And, and it's okay to not know everything and it's okay to go and research and find out everything. Absolutely. I've just, we've had a couple of questions pop up as we're chatting with people saying, please can we have a link to your blog that you mentioned? So I've just done the comments. I, I think they'll have done their own thing. So it's mariereynoldslondon.com forward slash blog. That's it. Yeah. Excellent. So I've just put that link in the comments in Zoom and Facebook. So yeah, definitely go and have a look at that. And, and on there, I mean, there's, there's things on there about energy medicine. I mean, there's one here I'm looking at actually, uh, Louise. Um, I would definitely recommend a therapist to read that because that gives you an insight of people with um, like eczema and how it was dealt with energetically and with um, supplements. But there's loads of things there. There's how I deal with rosacea there. There's how I deal with, um, you know, there's endometriosis, how that affects people's skin, um, how you can support them. Everything links back to the skin, but basically my work is holistic. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Um, and I suppose one other thing I wanted to ask about is, um, you've touched a bit on the different methods that you use, but are there any new methods that you're looking at? Any kind of new pieces of research um, in terms of skincare ingredients or in terms of different practices to bring into your, <coughs> that you're looking at and that are exciting you at the moment? Well, as far as skincare ingredients, um, I've, I just, I just like to keep things simple. I think we can get so bogged down with so many trends that everybody is, it's a little bit like standing in the eye of the storm and people are saying, right, we've got to use this brand new ingredient. We've got to use, and I think it personally, as I said before, I have been, I've used so many brands. 
I've used so many things and I've used so many fantastic brands. I think as far as, as cosmeceuticals, uh, great brands for, on my point of view are cosmetics and osmosis. Um, but my stance on skin is completely different because it's, it's about feeding the skin and it's about working with the skin. And so like you'll, you'll see that I don't actually have a moisturizer because I don't believe the skin needs moisturizing. It needs hydrating and you need hydrators and you need to use certain molecular um, oils to, to, to support the skin. Um, as far as new treatments and therapies, um, I do a lot of things with biophoton um, therapy and energy therapy. So biophoton therapy is by using um, infrared therapy with different frequencies that have the same light as our cells. So it's using biophoton bio bio therapy on specific points and, and on the skin as well as the body. Um, the thing that's exciting me at the moment is obviously um, my colon hydrotherapy. So I'm doing a closed colon hydrotherapy, um, but it's not just using just sort of like water to flush in and out. And by using, uh, uh, I will be using blends of my supplements, but uh, it also has LED running through the water. And I will also be able to imprint the water. So if the client comes in and I've got their blood, I'll be able to tell about different energetic imbalances and imprint the water from the machine that goes in you to help knock out these nasty frequencies as well as cleanse the colon. So that's the new things that I'll be doing. <laughs> okay, that sounds fascinating. <laughs> I'd love to see this in action. Um, we've had tons of comments pop up as well. Um, loads of people just saying this is pretty interesting, like um, fascinating kind of outlook on things. Um, I could listen to Marie all day and we've had one person say, oh, that's fabulous. fabulous. Um, but another question we've had is what would you, what do you recommend for clients who have trouble in falling asleep in terms of what to eat as the last meal of the day or kind of lifestyle changes to, to aid sleep? Okay, so, so what you have to remember is, first of all, um, sleep hygiene is really important. And you, you have to ask them when this happened, when it occurred, was there anything in particular, any stressful situation that has triggered this? Um, obviously, you know, COVID and, and everything, everything goes out the window, but you have to look at your sleep hygiene. We all know that blue light has an effect on melatonin, which is to do with your sleep, all right? And a lot of people are using white light, but actually it's the electro smog. Your phones emit microwaves and, uh, and radioactive waves, and that interferes with brain purging and your rest and repair. So if you suffer from anxiety, if you're suffering from poor sleep, it will exacerbate it. So getting them to make sure that they, take their phones out of their bedroom, all electricals out of the bedroom, they're gonna say, I use it for an alarm, but you can still hear your alarm in the hallway. You don't have to have it in your bedroom. But also making sure that your switches either side of your bed are turned off. Because that electro smog, if you're lying on a mattress with cord sprung mattress with any cords or any metal in it, it acts as a conductor. So you're actually conducting all of that electro smog as well as trying to, you know, um, purge any negativity in your body as well as doing your rest and repair. So that's the first thing. Also look at stimulants. What time are they drinking coffee or tea or caffeine? The last time that they should drink caffeine is very latest is four o'clock in the afternoon because it takes up to seven hours for caffeine enzymes to get out of your liver. So that's the very last thing. Look at implementing things like lettuce. I mean, like you don't have to um, be, as I say, a naturopath, but lettuce leaf tincture is fantastic. But if you don't want to get lettuce leaf, use the white of the lettuce and tell them to make a lettuce sandwich before they go to bed because the white of the lettuce is a natural opiate. Okay. To calm and relax. Look at things to, um, you know, natural forms of uh, like 5-HTP or dopamine. Um, Ask them to go to a naturopath. Ask them to go to sort of like get uh, allergy testing because certain intolerances can actually have an effect on that. And making sure that they don't eat after um, seven o'clock at night. Mm. You know, it's a huge one because I suppose most people probably do. So just making that change in itself would. Yeah, yeah. So I would say the big one is there is, is, is electrosmog, definitely electrosmog. And get a big hunk of rose quartz. People poo-poo crystals, but we are crystals. We are crystalline light structures. We are made of 90% water when we're born and it starts to evaporate as we get older. But water holds on to memory. It is liquid crystal. And we are also made of fascia, which is a collagen structure, and that is liquid crystal. So 
And when we have a big hunk of crystal quartz, it's photovoltaic, means that it gets its, its energy from the sun, all right? And it also absorbs electro smog. So if you get a big hunk, five kilogram hunk of rose quartz in your bedroom, it absorbs that electro smog. And also shungite. Shungite is another one, which is a black crystal. I usually have shungite in my water. Um, but I also do the shungite pyramids that you can get in your, in your put near your, your computers, look at earthing pads, Earthing is really good. Get your clients on something called, there's a, a website called groundology.co.uk where they do earthing sheets and they do earthing pads that you can put under your computers. So they're really, really good as well to knock out the electro smog. Excellent. Okay, so certainly probably a new area for most people to have a little look into and see. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Grounding and earthing. Excellent. Thank you. Um, We've had lots of comments pop up on Facebook. I'm just trying to find what I was looking at. There was a question that was kind of, um, what is your, if people could kind of, if you'd give people one piece of advice um, to, to change or one hero product, what would they be? Well, the hero product, I'm gonna to have to say Restore. <laughs> My Restore. Um, Restore was created actually. Um, <clears throat> I never actually wanted to get into the skincare side and the manufacturing side of it. It was like a, to me, it's like, oh my God, it's a headache. Restore was created. I've always done my own alchemy because I've done biochemic medicine and I've used tissue salts and, and all sorts of things. Um, and I created Restore and I used to use it on scar tissue and get fantastic results from it. And Alessandra Steinheimer, for those uh, followers, I mean, you should know who she is. If you don't know who she is, she's a very gorgeous, beautiful um, uh, editor. She was the editor of Glamour magazine. Um, she uh, texted me and said, oh my God, you know, I woke up and she said, I've had this inflammation. Uh, what can I do? You know, what can I use? And I sent her what is now known as Restore. And she just said to me, you've got to bring it to market. You have to bring it to market. So I brought it to market and it exploded onto, I mean, it's won awards. It was voted, you know, best editor's product for Vogue. It's won awards uh, for um, uh, the best holistic product. Um, and it is fantastic for skin rejuvenation, for acne, for rosacea, for pigmentation, because each strain of bacteria in that product actually helps with chore or lightening or brightening or inflammation. So that would be my hero product, definitely. Fabulous. Thank you. And I know we're, we're getting quite close to time, but before we finish, I just wanted to touch again on what we were speaking about at the beginning, which was um, obviously as you kind of transitioned pre-lockdown and during to do more remote um, services. So um, both consultations and kind of treating clients remotely. Are there um, any ways, I suppose, that you can advise for therapists who want to start branching out into that a little bit more? How yeah. can they get a bit more confident and get started and get clients going? And, and advice? You have to educate yourself. Read what I said is, is follow the people. Think about, think about what holistic means to you. So holistic, forget about skin for now. Forget about beauty, okay? Because Beauty is being holistically healthy and being the best version of yourself, okay? So if you think about beauty, forget about beauty being a mechanical sense. What you have to do right now, and you've got to think of things, this is an opportunity for you to really feed your education. Everybody has come online. There's been loads of Insta lives. There's been loads of experts talking. Go and, and literally be a magpie and start collecting all of these wonderful little bits of, of snippets. I've given you some today about electrosmog, about eating late at night. And make your own consultation card. Think about the things that you don't have to do to implement yourself, like you're not diagnosing anything and you're not telling people to take certain tablets. But what you are doing is building up a profile of why they might not be sleeping, why they, they might get, you know, a sensitivity. Look at their gut and just say, well, you might need, you know, to look at, you know, avoiding dairy and maybe implement an, a, a probiotic. Um, you know, read my blogs, read other people's blogs, go and follow, you know, naturopaths, go and follow um, holistic therapists, go and follow, you know, uh, therapists that are more on um, cosmeceuticals. Cosmetics is a fantastic one. Osmosis is a fantastic one. They're really generous with their knowledge. So, you know, and just start building a profile of what you want to ask your client. 
within my, my consultation, I do their, their, their name and their address and their age and their occupation. Occupation is really important. Occupational hazards, you have to think of things like that. If somebody's in front of a computer all day, or if they're in a concrete building, they're going to absorb a lot of moisture. It's going to cause a lot of dehydration and dull skin. Okay, and it can also cause a lack in vitamin D. So the, the, these little things, you've got, your occupation is really important. Um, are they shift workers? So again, that's going to have an impact on the, on, the, on the body. Look at the organ clock. So it'll tell you if they're waking up between, say, three and five. That's the lung zone. The lung zone is to do with emotional, so emotional stress. So you would know, and it gives you an indication. So it educates you, and you say, well, what time are you are you waking up or if they're waking up or finding it hard to go to sleep usually because they've eaten late at night because that's mm -hmm. all that liver meridian you see so it doesn't make you a witch it just makes you join in the dots yeah okay so really just get out and start educating yourself and putting a, a person yeah. right and, and you don't have to overthink things just start doing little tiny little things you know and and reaching out and doing consultations mm. Fantastic. Well, I think um, I know that uh, we're coming up to time, so I will let you go, Marie, but we've had so many comments just saying it's been such a great opportunity to listen to you and to learn from you. And um, oh, I hope it's helpful. Definitely. We've had lots and lots of comments and likes and uh, engagement to, oh, to yeah, give yeah, um, your advice. So thank you. It's, it's been fantastic having you join us. Um, the, the video will be available to watch back on our Facebook if anyone missed anything. So I know we covered tons and it was loads and loads of great advice in there. So if you want to watch back, it's on our professional. I will also say, if people also follow me on Instagram, because I do loads of posts on Instagram. The blog, the blog sometimes I, I do it when I can, but Instagram, there's loads of information on there. Absolute loads. It's all about different types of milk, you know, different, you know, there's loads and loads of different things on there. So uh, my Instagram is Marie Reynolds underscore London, I have to think then. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, there's, there's loads of information. And, you know, I'm, I'm always there. If I can help anybody, you know, if, if they can reach out, if I can help anybody, I'm there, you know, especially now what's going on with, you know, mobile therapists and the ability that we can't do our facial treatment. So if I can help you, I will. Oh, thank you. That's fantastic. And it's been so great to have advice of, of ideas to help broaden people's, um, people's spectrum of practice while it is so tough out there at the moment with not being able to, to do the hands-on face treatments for now. Although, fingers crossed very soon. <laughs> but for now, thank you so much, Marie. It's been fantastic having you with us. And thanks, everyone, for watching. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.